So hey everybody, hope you watched my Creep Show movie review not too long ago, because right now I'm going to review its sequel, Creep Show 2. Um, Creep Show 2 was written by George A. Romero, who directed Creep Show 1. Um, Michael Gornick, who I don't know what else he's directed, directed this film. Um, and Stephen King provided the stories, but he did not write the screenplay for this film because George A. Romero did that. Um, so King and Romero were both a part of this one, but in different sense, in a different sense. Um, but for the most part, they were a part of this, but unfortunately had a different director who was in charge of the whole thing. Um, so Creep Show 2, you guys, it came out in 1987, uh, a lot shorter than Creep Show 1, and not as many stories in this one as, a, as in Creep Show 1. Uh, there's only three stories compared to Creep Show 1's uh, five stories. Um, in Creep Show 2, you guys, uh, it's definitely more of a fantasy approach. It's still a horror movie, but as far as like the in between segments and how these stories are presented, it's definitely more on the line of a dark fantasy. Um, rather than this whole Grim Creep Reaper character that we saw from Creep Show 1 and even on the cover of Creep Show 2, we get more of a goblin looking guy uh, hosting the whole thing. Um, so he, unfortunately that already kind of ruined the suspense of the first film with, you know, who is this Grim Reaper guy who's kind of just guiding us through these different stories to, oh, hey, I'm this, this goblin guy. The next story is about this. And while that's going on, little Timmy's going to bike away from this and all that kind of stuff. Um, and they also had more animated segments in between the stories and they tried to kind of tell a story that went along the whole time. Um, rather than having, you know, live action animation, live action animation kind of thing. Um, but in Creepshow 2, you guys, we get a story that involves, um, a guy who's going to close down his shop soon because he's not making enough business. And, um, his store gets robbed shortly before he's kind of closing up shop. And, uh, this guy, this Indian guy who is in debt with him gives him this really valuable, um, form of rocks of some kind like a really valuable rock like a diamond necklace thing or something um but he his store gets robbed and um even that necklace thing that the indian man gave him uh gets stolen by actually with someone from his family who uh is running this gang that's trying to save up enough money to go to california um so they successfully succeed and kill the um the store owners and um the Indian who was in front of the store, who was kind of this wooden statue, um, he he kills off each of them one by one uh, through this magical thing where that makes him come to life. Uh, some unknown mystical force brought him to life of some kind. And um, the second story is called The Raft, which is a story I really don't like and I'm going to get here in a second. Um, that involves a group of teenagers who are, for some reason, decide to go swim out in this lake that even has a no swimming sign in front of it. Um, and they encounter this, like, trash bag looking monster in the lake that eats away at any human that gets in its way in the lake. Um, and they have to go onto this raft so they can keep away from it. But over time, while they're on this raft, the trash bag creature slowly eats away at them, uh, finds a way to get. Get to eat away with them without them having to be in the water for it to eat them. Um, then there was a third story that involved a woman hitting a hitchhiker by accident, and that's kind of haunting her over time. And there's this hitchhiker corpse that keeps on reoccurring throughout the story, and she tries keep she consistently tries to kill it, but it keeps on coming back to life to haunt her. And there's this whole deal with. You know, how is she going to keep this away from her husband? And how is she going to keep this a secret from the people who saw this go on when she hit the man on the on the street and all this stuff? Um, but like Creepshow 1, the, the segments you saw in between the stories, rather than just right at the beginning of the film, like in Creepshow 1, it's, it's a story that's shown throughout the film in between the stories at the beginning and at the end. And at the end, like the first film, they, they wrap up that story to conclude the film. Um, besides the op the very opening scene, which was live action, the rest of it was animated. Um, really didn't like that. I think it would have been cool to see, um, you know, this kid who really wanted this new Creepshow comic, 
uh, kind of his story told in live action I think would have been better. But I think they did that just because of budget reasons. But I think it would have been cool if they would have done it in live action. Um, so now I'm going to get to the positives and negatives of Creepshow to you guys. Um, there were some interesting ideas in this film. I think there was some real potential for this film to be successful, but unfortunately it just is not as successful as the first film. I liked that they kept the formula of one, of story that starts off everything, story, 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 have some type of in-between between all those stories, use the story from story one to conclude everything and show the conclusion to that story to wrap up the film. The film keeps all that intact very well. Um, I thought the opening scene in this was very clever for the most part not as clever as one of once again but it was clever and i thought it was more clever than some things that we got to see later in the film uh so it started off good but it kind of degraded over time as one of those kind of films um stephen king and tom savani have roles in this again unfortunately they're much smaller roles um stephen king is only in this film for like five seconds and Tom Savani is, isn't even Tom Savani in this. He has a whole makeup effect near the beginning of the film. And uh, he basically just throws out this comic stack to the kid that we get to see in the in-between segments. And then we don't even get to see him again until near the end of the film. So even Tom Savani had a bigger role than Stephen King in this, unfortunately. Um, but they're both in it nonetheless, so I gave that a positive part of the film. Um, now on to the negatives, because I have quite a few of them. Um, the animation in this was very lame. I, I think they really rushed the animation in this. And not only did they rush it, it was just very sloppily put together and the style of their animation I thought was not very good. Kind of reminded me of The Legend of Zelda Wand of Gamelon, kind of the infamous uh, nobody plays the video game kind of a, a game. Um, and unfortunately that animation from that game made it in its way into Creepshow 2, unfortunately, with very bad results. Um, overall, the, the overall stories for Creepshow 2 were not as fun as they were in Creepshow 1. They weren't as fun, they weren't as scary, they weren't as campy, nor were they as creative as the ones used for Creepshow 1. Um, I thought the characters in this, in this film were very poorly written, specifically in the Raft story. I could have cared less if those kids died, because they were just very poorly written. They were not relatable at all. Uh, very cardboard, not developed at all. Uh, they jumped right in, and we barely knew anything about them. So when they died, we really didn't feel anything because we knew nothing about them. So it was it was very hard to connect with that, I thought. Um, this film was too short of an experience. It's only a 89-minute film, and it's an anthology of three stories. So right there, I think that's just way too short. I really think if they really wanted this film to be as successful and as appreciated as the first Creep Show, it should have been a two-hour film like the first film. And the first film had five stories, and they did a better job telling five stories in two hours than this film told three stories in 89 minutes. Um, Romero, I thought, should have really directed this again. I don't think they should have made this until he was on board as director, just like I don't think they should have done this until Stephen King was was signed on to be the writer. I really think this film would have benefited if Stephen King wrote the screenplay again and George A. Romero directed, just like in the first film. Because they didn't use that, the film wasn't as successful. Um, I think they should have kept the in-betweens, you know, like the, the segments in between the stories as more of a horror vibe like in the first film rather than the whole fantasy vibe with the dragons and the creatures and this goblin guy that we didn't even see in the first creep show. Um, they should have just used the Grim Reaper guy again. I really think they should have. Uh, even though he had a similar laugh to the, that character from the first film, it wasn't the same character. Um, and if they really wanted to use a different character, make sure he's as good, if not better, than that Grim Reaper character, and he wasn't. Um, so overall, guys, I give Creepshow 2 a 7.5 out of 10. Overall, it's just really not as good as, as number one. It's always going to be the second choice. It's always going to be, you know, the sequel that never quite lived up to the original like a lot of other sequels. Um... So it's not going to go down in history as one of the better sequels, because it really isn't. Um, 
very just it was just very subpar compared to number one. Um, and I just still can't wrap my mind around the fact that it's three stories in 89 minutes that is not as good, while Creepshow 1 was five stories that could be told in two hours and they were better stories. So that right there is, I think, is just a sign that King really should have been the writer of this. I mean, I love Romero. I just think he's better off as the director than he is as the writer. Um, and I, I think they just should have assigned, reassigned people for this film. I, I don't think this Michael Gornick was the right choice as director. Um, so like I said, guys, Creepshow 2, 7.5 out of 10. It's okay. Uh, if you love Creepshow 1, it might be worth at least one view. If not, you can ignore it altogether. Um, it's an okay film.